because we have them. It's just kind of nice to be able to do. But I'm just going to use the straight sugar today just for just to go with the simplest version. I'm going to mix those together. I'm going to use about a cup of milk and a cup of water. Um, it doesn't really matter what kind of milk, whether it's low fat milk or. Um, you can basically use whatever you want for liquid. Uh, so I'm going to go with the six cups just because I know that we can make whatever adjustments we need to make. And I'm not even worrying about precise, like is it perfectly flat and level. Um, but that's not Everybody has baking powder in a great <laughs> yeah. Okay, the recipe says three tablespoons. I use a little bit generous tablespoons. Um, so it's probably more like three tablespoons plus a teaspoon or something. Um, and then nutmeg. I go through three or four pounds of cinnamon out of summer. In the bakery, so I mean, we'll probably breathe more of this stuff than most people eat in the course of an average summer. That recipe calls for sort of a scant tablespoon, again, approximate. I sift that in. Yeah. So, this is the part that counts. This is where we're getting the, uh, we're getting the texture of the batter figured out. It doesn't want to be like a roll-out cookie dough or a mm -hmm. bread dough. You don't want it to be kneadable. You don't want it to be um, too solid. Because the more flour you have in the donut dough, the harder the donuts are going to be. And if you want the option of being able to roll out, out the scraps a second time, you're going to invariably be adding flour at that point, so you don't want it to be too floury. So you want it to be kind of sticky. This is still a little too too soft, a little too sticky. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put a little bit more flour in, and what I do is I just go a little bit of time. It's not really measured, but I would estimate that's probably I don't know a third of a cup or so. And I'm just maybe half a cup. I'm just gonna go based on the fact that. I know what I'm looking for because I've made this before. Makes you strong. So because the fact that this is a sticky gooey mess, there's no way we can roll that out. What you do, here's another reason to have a sifter or a strainer, is put a lot of flour on your table. A lot. And you don't want any gaps in it. You don't want you want a lot. Okay? Then I have this handy dandy tool. You can try to get this out of there with a spoon, but it's going to be um, it's going to be a lot just left stuck in the bowl. But this big bowl scraper that looks homemade is a nice tool. Actually, I got it at the Maine Boats and Harbors Boat Show a couple of years ago. <laughs> but a lot of craft fairs and places like that we have this kind of stuff. And using the bowl scraper, you can get it off the sides of the bowl much better than you would with a spoon. Off. Other than that, I would recommend a rubber spatula. Um, like one of those kind of things, so, you know, uh, something that will flex a little bit. So I'm going to drop this right onto that flour. I'm not going to let the bowl touch the table and make a gap in the flour. I want there to be no no way this is going to actually touch that wooden table and stick to it. And I'm going to just shake a bunch more flour on top of that, but I'm not mixing it in. I'm just covering the surfaces. You can just do this. All you're trying to do is make it reasonably flat. You don't want it too thin. I would say probably a half inch or so, maybe a strong half inch, five eighths of an inch. I don't measure it. You want to get the most you possibly can the first time you roll them out. So cut them out real close together. So my hands have flour on them. My table has flour on it. My cookie cutter has flour on it. Lots of flour on everything, but I'm not, I'm not working it into the dough. I'm just, it's just on the surface of the dough keeping things from sticking dry them. Well, I, I stretch out the hole a little bit because then you'll get a hole. If you, if, you, uh, if you do one without doing that, I'll just put this in as is, and you can see the difference. And again, the reason I dare to get my fingers that close is just practice. So, you know, you're not obligated to do that. You can set it in. A, but look at the difference in size. Yeah. 
So I'm going to gently flip them over with the stick. Be careful not to make a lot of grease splashes because, again, because they hurt. Put that on while they're still warm because it sticks to the bread.